welcome you to Love in the Pot. So I did a throwback video and when I say throwback I mean old um, some time ago and it was pretty awesome and I would like to share it with you. I am demonstrating uh, an example of how I set up the Sabbath prep and um, I thought the information would be useful. So just to introduce the video so you know what I'm talking about because it has uh, some snippets and things uh, that I had to clean up because the game remember is old. <laughs> so please bear with me, be patient, but the content is good. Um, but to set it up, I am prepping cold gyro sandwiches and I happen to have had a personal chef service that the day prior so I did some prep to help myself along for what I knew I needed to do for Sabbath so I am beginning the video with that and you'll see I'll mention marinating the chicken well what happened was I had a personal chef service the day before and I had to make like chicken florentine or something like that that required boneless skinless chicken breast so while I was marinating and fabricating the meat for that for my client I also did a portion of meat for my family as well and I allowed it to marinate overnight so now you know what we'll be doing I hope to see you soon remember to like share subscribe and please do share your comments I really really appreciate it and thank you so much happy prepping I am here with you all today just to show you a few little things I do um, to prep for Sabbath. I hope you all are having a good prep day. So I happen to be a personal chef. I've done catering and done other positions in the field. Um, so right now I'm a stay-at-home mom, homeschooling and trying my best to preserve all of our bodies by feeding us healthy. Um, or as, as healthily as I can and as our budget will allow. So today I am going to show you how I would prep um, a closed Sabbath meal. I've already done a few things ahead. Um, um, yesterday I happened to have had a um, cooking job. <laughs> so I did a few things for myself while I was prepping those meals, I had to make Florentine, so I marinated enough. Today we're going to be cooking the marinated meat that I did. I marinated it with um, fresh minced garlic, fresh herbs like parsley, thyme, oregano, and I'm going to add some, a little bit of rosemary and a little bit more fresh thyme now, and I put lemon zest, and lemon juice, olive oil, and garlic, salt, and pepper. So that's what I did. It's been marinating overnight. So now I'm going to finalize that process. I have a saute pan, cast iron skillet, whatever you like to use, preferably nonstick. If it's not nonstick, that's okay. You're just going to get it hot enough to where it don't stick. And don't play with the meat. Let it stay and allow it to brown. If it's sticking, it's not ready to be good. Okay. So I have a little rosemary here, a little bit of fresh thyme. When you use your knife, you want to maximize the space of your board. I hope you can see by um, holding your knife at a 45 degree angle to your board. So I'm just going to do a back and forth rocking motion, keeping my fingers clear. Give it a rough chop. I have that to add to my marinated chicken. I'm going to preheat my skillet. I also have some garlic. I'll take, sometimes I'll buy it like this because it's already pre peeled. Let's work for me. Have your oven preheated because we're going to brown the outside and then we're going to finish it in the oven. I have here broth, I have my chopped herbs, I have my seasoning blend. I'm back with my chicken as you can see. If you can see it, we have it here. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning to each side. My blend, poultry, hot pepper, garlic, the fresh herbs. It's already been marinated. But keep in mind you want to have something on hand to do with the raw chicken and then something ready to handle the cooked chicken. Do not mix because the raw utensil will then make your cooked chicken unhealthy to eat. So 
season both sides. Our pan has been preheating. I turned it down to low. I like to cook with olive oil and canola oil. Canola oil has a slightly higher smoke point than extra virgin olive oil, which I usually use. So I'm not going to saute it with that. I'll finish it with that. So I'll put the oil. I coated my pan, as you can see. Now I'm going to place the chicken nice side down. Now I can raise the temperature on my pan because the cold chicken is going to drop the temperature and you want to get browning. That clean hands. I started with clean hands just so you know. And I have some clean tongs to flip my chicken. Now what we're going to do, we're going to allow this to brown and then we're going to be ready to flip it and we'll finish it in the oven after we deglaze the pan. Okay. You could very easily um, just get Italian dressing and simplify it to use with salt and pepper and use the Italian dressing to coat it later to give it more flavor. But I always do things above and beyond. <laughs> so this is how I do it. You can kind of tell it's about ready. At the edge, it's kind of sort of getting the brown. So it's trying to okay the white around the edge too. And you'll also kind of get the cheese if it's getting a little golden there. So it's a good time to know when it's kind of cooked. So I'm not going to mess with this for at least a good 45 seconds to a minute. I'm going to take a piece. It should release. If it doesn't release, it hasn't been long enough. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Okay, so now you can see I flipped it and the chicken has browned nicely. It did not stick or give me any trouble. So now I'm going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of lemon juice and chicken stock. When you deglaze, you want to add cold liquor to a hot pan to get up the brown bits. The brown bits half flavor. So I turned that on just for a minute to get that um, steam. Now, I'm gonna cook this for maybe another minute or so, then I'm gonna finish it in the oven. So it can slowly roast. And that's one less thing for me to look at or worry about. All right, and it's ready to go in the oven. It's been about a minute. So I'm gonna throw that in the oven. It's been preheated. Make sure you use a pan that's completely oven safe. The handles should not be um, lined with plastic so it doesn't melt. Um, that was cast iron. I have all these herbs available, so I'm going to use them um, in my tzatziki sauce. And also, I'll use them later in the week as I make stuff. Set a timer for about 10 minutes on the chicken. Um, since we've started the cooking process, it's not going to take very long. It may take about 10, maybe 12 minutes. But you definitely don't want to overcook it. Okay, so I'm going to clean up and get ready to make tzatziki. Don't worry about going too fast. You'll get faster as you go. The key is to be efficient and safe. So we have our sliced cucumber. That's going to be for our gyro sandwiches. Let's put those into a bowl. So I'm going to... This cucumber, not into the, the sour cream because I want to squeeze out the moisture. Watch it on um, knuckles. Turn it if it gets small. It's not worth cutting yourself over a little piece. And that's that. Cucumbers have a lot of water in them, so you don't want to make your sauce all wet. If you have regular yogurt and not Greek yogurt, you can hold it over a strainer or cheesecloth for at least a couple of hours and it will strain out a lot of the wetness and you'll have a nice Greek yogurt. Okay, it's just thick. It squeeze out the excess moisture. It's pretty dry. Just check that big chicken breast. It's about two degrees away from where I want it, so I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. In the meantime, I'll clean up the board. We have our sour cream mixture here with the drained cucumber. Now, I am going to pull out that 
micro plane. Wash some of this liquid off and zest some lemon juice. Some lemon zest in there and squeeze some fresh lemon juice since I have it. So you don't want the white, you just want the nice um, zest that has all those essential oils. Has the flavor of the lemon without being so pungent. Taste and adjust. Add bit by bit because you can always add more, but you cannot take it away. You would have to find a way to fix it. So here I have the completed tzatziki. We added to this the fresh zested lemon, the juice of a half a lemon, the one clove of minced garlic, a little bit, uh, probably like a tablespoon of our chopped herbs, um, about a tablespoon of minced red onion, just chopped really, 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 really fine. And um, I added salt, pepper, a little bit of our seasoning mix from earlier. And then I tasted it and it needed a little bit more garlic and black pepper. So that's what I've done here. So the tzatziki is ready to go. I am going to place it in the fridge until I'm ready to work with it. It is ready. Could have come out a minute earlier, but that's okay. culinary world we call all these brown bits fond. They are the brown caramelized flavorings and juices at the bottom of the pan and I'm not going to let that go waste. So things like this is how you build flavor and make it taste better than the normal. So I'm going to take some of the broth that I had these resting in and I'm going to pull up that flavor. Pouring it into the pan. Take a wooden spoon and scrape it up. Remember, this came out of the oven. Don't touch it without a hot hand. I'm gonna add some more broth to it, just a little. Start the matches Can you see? Yeah. Okay, we're going to complete the prep for our gyros. We're making cold gyro sandwiches. I have here pita pocket bread. I find the uh, Sam's Choice brand to be really soft. Most pita isn't very good when it's not warm. So I have that. I also have the cucumber and the red onion I prepped earlier. I have some Roma tomatoes that we're gonna chop up. I still have my, res my leftover fresh herbs from earlier. We'll be using that. And the seasoning mix that we use on the chicken. The chicken, um, after it came down to room temperature, I put it in a Ziploc bag. I poured over that concentrated broth and I um, Ziplocked it up and put it in the freezer to chill rapidly. Um, while it's cooling, it's going to absorb the moisture from the broth and it's gonna go back into the meat and help it to be juicy. The color may be a little darker because we concentrated the broth. Okay, so while once that got cold, I put it in the refrigerator. Mind you, never put hot items in your freezer. You're going to make things melt and get um, those clumps of ice all in your freezer and then you need to do a defrost treatment. So make sure it's room temperature first. Okay, so chicken was placed in the fridge and I've cleaned up my station, I'm coming to you with clean hands. Um, and we're ready to finalize the detail prep for the gyros. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I prep the onion. Firstly, I have skinned it. I left the bulb on, I just cut it in half. I took the tip off so that I was able to peel it. And um, I'm gonna show you two tricks. First, when you are dicing an onion, this will save your life right here. So what you're going to do is cut it horizontally then vertically and then you'll be able to make a nice perfect dice. And it's so much easier. So I'm going to place my palm here on the onion. I'm controlling the knife still at the base, ripping the handle as such, thumb here, and I'm gonna pinch it with the thumb and the pointer, palm here, and I'm going to make my levels here, my planks. Now, you can either make them large or you can make them small, depending on how fine you want your onion to be. We're not using this, I just wanna show you how I did the nice pretty little dice earlier. Well, how you can do it intentionally. All right, so when you go through, you do not go all the way through. You stop about a quarter inch to a half inch before the end of the bulb, okay? 
and you continue until you go all the way up. Watching your palm, paying attention. Okay, so now, now you're gonna turn it and you're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. Ooh, I need to sharpen my knife. I'm gonna pause and sharpen. Okay, family, I'm back, sharpen blade. Mind you, if you discover that your knife is dull, stop and sharpen it if you're able to. You're more than likely to cut yourself with a dull knife. Now we're gonna turn it back and go across it and make a nice, beautiful dice. Perfect little cube, see? Now I'm going to show you how I did the little julienne for my onion. I'm actually, in this case, I'm going to remove the bowl, discard that. So now that I've cut it in half, I turned it this way, it's pretty much in a quarter because we started with a half of the bowl. And I'm going to make some little stripes. And once it gets strange, so you can see, I'm gonna flip it down and now I can continue. Try to make them kind of thin. You don't want a thick hunk of onion. Those have been seeded, as you can see. Now we're just going to make little slices. I'm not doing it traditionally because as I said, I don't want things to be wet. So I know this is for next day, so I'm prepping to accommodate that. And then I'm gonna go back to the paper towel so it can absorb more moisture, and then we'll use them. Um, well, by the time we get to them, they'll be more dry. Tomatoes are prepped, the onion is prepped, the cucumber's done, we have our herbs, we have our pita pockets, and now we need to deal with the chicken. It might give off a little broth, so I'm gonna put some napkins nearby. And I also um, love to have Clorox wipes or Lysol wipes on hand for uh, quick sanitizing in between things. So, let me see. I have a plate here that I'm gonna put the chicken on. Once we slice it, let me get it. And there it is in the Ziploc bag. Uh, oftentimes I will do things like this and, and completely cook it. And I'll have a quick option to make, you know, deli sandwich, taco, whatever I need to do with it. Or if I know I'm going to use it in a baked casserole dish, then I do not cook it all the way. I'll brown it like we did the beginning processes, and then I will um, cool it and put it away and make sure I label the bag with the date and uh, what it is and that it's not fully cooked. So don't dump the broth. Even whatever we don't use today, this would be great to go with some soup. If you ever notice, meat has a a grain pattern. If you go against it, it won't be tough. Doesn't that look nice? Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna lightly toss it around so we can spread the load. You'd be surprised how much yield you can get out of three chicken breasts. That's, that's all that was. And they weren't enormous, but look how juicy. You see? It's gonna be good. So here I have our setup. I've done um, what we call mise en place. Everything done decently and in order, mise en place. Mise en place means have everything in its place ready to go. So I have my pita pockets here. We have our yummy chicken breast ready to rock and roll for assembly. I have lettuce that I've cut in half. Um, the tzatziki sauce that we made earlier. The tomato strips. See? And I um, plastic wrapped the counter. That way I could work directly on the surface and um, make multiple sandwiches at once. Pita pockets down. Five adults are having gyros. So I'm gonna build accordingly. All right. A thin layer of the tzatziki sauce because this is nice and thick so it can tolerate it. And then if they want more, we can reserve. 
reserve a little bit for everybody. Yeah, like another tablespoon for dipping. Don't come over the edge too much so it doesn't lose out. So we do everything assembly line style is so much faster. So I put a dollop, dollop, dollop. Now spread, 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 and then on to the next thing. I'm gonna do the chicken. Ooh, looks good. You want to account for about at least four ounces per person. Watch out for blood spots. If you have one, it doesn't mean it's not done. We cooked it to temperature, so just cut out the blood spot. Don't stick your fingers in there. You have meat juice going on. Even if you wipe it off, you still don't want to put those um, germs in the cheese. Then your cheese is going to mold fast. I have sandwich picks with the little frills on it. I love these because I can't stand for everything to come falling out of my sandwich. So, let me do this one. Let me see. I'm going to hold down the lettuce side and flip it over the top. The other side. I go down at a 45 Everything's kind of at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> at a 45 degree angle so I can pierce through without it poking you on the other end. So here's your gyro wrap. Um, I'm going to complete the lunch portion to my Sabbath cold prep. It's just pearl couscous boiled. You strain it. Mm, it's just a little pasta that looks like a pearl. See? It's a little bead of pasta. So I boiled that until it was done. Um, strained it. Let it cool. Uh, and then to it, I in a bowl, I added diced cucumber. So this would be perfect to make after making your gyros. Because pretty much everything that was on the gyro is in this salad. Diced cucumber. Diced tomato. Um, I have a little diced tomato and some um, cherry tomatoes that I cut in half. Um, small dice of red bell pepper, green bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, fresh herbs, pretty much the same herbs that I put in um, the chicken. And um, what else did I put in there? Lemon juice, lemon zest, olive oil, and seasonings. Fresh garlic, and that's it. Control your sodium, you can control the flavor that's in there, and so on. You will enjoy give it a try they were absolutely delicious and of course you can totally cheat do it with roasted or oven roasted veggies you season them with some fresh herbs garlic italian seasoning salt and pepper um olive oil or you could do something just as simple as the um gyro lamb meat or you can buy the frozen grilled chicken strips and jazz them up a little bit and um have an easy alternative to replicate this 
meal. So I hope you enjoy. Please remember to give me feedback, like, subscribe, and share. And thank you again for joining me on Loving the Pot.